YouTube, PD Two Finger here with an exceptionally bright video. I'm, I'm often I'll be looking here when the thing starts on. Oh, hey, uh, that's because I have a monitor over there, and that's where the software where I can see the TV. <laughs> There's the camera, and I don't like the way the light reflects off my glasses. So I'll, you know, every video is the same. It's like. Hey, you, YouTube, <laughs> Petey, how are you? So, today is unboxing. Mm -hmm. What's in the box? Just wait and see. Uh, that What is inside of that box is going to go inside of this box, which is going to be explained pretty thoroughly. I'll go into detail about how that's going to work. And what the purpose of this is for? It's it's actually it's not for music. It's for uh, a drum machine, like a MP3 player that plays loops of drums, and then a bass guitar that my old lady plays, and then I play electric guitar. So that's going to go to a couple of big speakers that sound really good, and then a giant subwoofer, like a ba big bass cabinet. Because it's a two. What's in here is a 2.1 amp board. It's a Class D. It's a TPA 3116D2. Class D 2.1, 50 by 50 by 100. So, what that means is you go into it with a right and left channel of regular audio. And let's say you have a, a MP3 or a Walkman. So you would go into that that would input on it. And then it runs off of 12 or 24 volts. Let's say it's 10 amps, 24 volts comes in to power this. And then what comes out, uh, volume, bass, treble speaker volume, uh, bass frequency knob. Well, it's got a lot of knobs. You can really adjust the frequency of the bass for the subwoofer, the volume for the bass subwoofer, the volume for the top speakers. Uh, I don't think there's a balance for right and left because that's kind of ridiculous, but this is a really cool amp board. So then what comes out is three output jacks, there's a right speaker, a left speaker, and then the sub-channel speaker. So the right and left are rated at 50 watts, the subwoofer is 100 because it takes more power to move that big speaker, the subwoofer. Make sense? So without further ado, I got the, I got I ordered this unit off of eBay China and it is a class D which the way that this circuit works it's considered a digital amplifier because what how how it actually does its thing is your your you could look at it like a triangle okay whereas the one point of the triangle would be the output. So we have, like, here's our triangle. This would be the output, and then the input we would have uh, one going in here and one going in here. So this would be the power, the 12 volts, and this would be my audio signal coming in here. So then inside this triangle, what happens is the triangle is the amp. Uh, the, it makes a sine wave, which is a big wave, okay? huge sine wave and the carrier wave the sine wave is injected with my audio signal my audio input gets installed onto that carrier wave and then at the end of it there's a filter which filters out that sine wave and what you're left with is the original signal comes out but it's amplified way bigger than what it was. So that's how the Class D amp works. It's called a digital amp because of the way that this oscillation works, but fear not, there's no hexadecimal conversion. There's no DA, AD, ADTA, analog to digital and then digital to analog conversion. Like if you have a digital delay pedal, your sound goes in and there's an AD, analog to digital. So your analog audio signal gets converted into digi digital pad. That's zeros and ones. So then it goes into the zero and ones and they play around with it to 
repeat it to make it echo because it's a digital delay. And then uh, that all that information, those zeros and ones, come back to a DA, a digital analog converter, and then it comes out and it's echoing. So that's what people uh, shake their fist. Digital. Urgh, you ruined my life. Digital. Urgh, hate it. Come here, digital. I'll slap you. So people get really upset about digital stuff and make asses out of themselves on internet forums constantly. They champion analog. Oh, tube. It's tube. 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 Oh, gotta have my tubes. If I only had tubes, then I could, you know, do my guitar thing. You know, that's my problem. I just don't have that giant tube amp, so I'm not any good. You know, I keep playing in a Motley Crue cover band because I only have a solid state amp. That's that's the problem. <laughs> I don't think so. So yeah, this is a Class D amp board. And let's take a look. Dear buyer, one of those like we're forming a business relationship over this twenty-four dollar and ninety-five cent class D import. So yeah, these little boxes are great. I love to repurpose these for junk boxes. I usually will cut the lid off of it and use this as a little parts bin or as a shipping box for a pedal. Let's see what we got in here. Da, 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 da. Okay, so it's the packaging is not the best. Let's see what we got. Put the glasses out of my nose. Did they send me the hardware? They, because in the in the in the description they showed that they were going to send uh, nods, standoffs, and fasteners, and it looks like they did. So we got a little bubble wrap, and then here is the bag with the amplifier in it. And I apologize for how slow going and off off camera <laughs> all of this is. So here we go with the amp. Go ahead and take a look at that. The heat sink looks pretty sufficient. Actually, it kind of looks small for what it does. And then we have uh, the light blue one is the input for the audio. Then uh, the white one is another way to get the audio in. It's just three pins on a little uh, plug-in jack you would put in. Then there's the right out, left out, and bass speaker connections. And here, these are screw down terminals. And then the power is here. We have a pretty large capacitor, filter capacitor for the audio. 12 to 24 volt input. Attention, please. Please check whether the circuit is properly connected and then plugged in. The wrong line or line short circuit may cause damage to the chip. So this means that you can't plug this in reverse you'll it'll blow there's no reverse polarity protection on this which uh, I will put I will fuse this whenever I work with these I install a glass three three and a half millimeter I think it is six millimeter whatever they are the large old automotive style and I'll put a two amp in sometimes that'll blow and then uh, put a three or a four but yeah, there's the heat sink is held down by four screws because there's two of those TDA uh, chips in here, the 3116D2. There's one here and one here. One of them runs the right and left channel. The other one just runs some mono for the base for the output. And the controls are master volume, treble which adjusts the treble for the right and left speakers and then a treble volume which is actually volume for those speakers then there's frequency and bass volume so this is the volume for the subwoofer woofer, and this is the frequency for the subwoofer 
So typically, you turn that all the way down and then bump it up a little bit so you really hear where that bass is pumping. Um, at the bottom end of the frequency, it's so low, uh, most of them, that it doesn't fare well to sit there. The range of where a kick drum sounds or a bass guitar is even a little above that, so we're going to want to turn that up a little bit. And then if you continue turning it up, like if you have a problem where your speaker can't handle that level of bass where it's going to clip the speaker and it's going to sound like farts, it's going to sound bad, you can continue to keep turning that knob up and it'll just keep shaving off more and more low frequency and get it to where it's just enough bass that that speaker can handle. So with all these controls, like if you were a person who just wanted to crank it up and then crank it down, this wouldn't really be the board for you. They sell other ones that have just a volume knob on it. This one, the way this setup is going to run is this amp board is going inside of this box here. And this box is going to have uh, input on this side and an input on this side. And then there's going to be an MP3 player that lives right in here. I have this there's a remote control for it, and we'll use an SD card that fits into this. So yeah, here's here's the MP3 player. This is two dollars and two and a quarter. I pay for these. I think it's actually two two dollars and twelve cents. Now this particular model, it came with. Uh, the remote and the battery and the connecting cables and a couple of plugs to cover the screw holes. So I paid a little more. I think it's it's like four dollars for the full kit. But yeah, that's this is basically two eighteen six fifty. So if you have 18650 holders, you would pop two of these in here. These are lithium ion rechargeable batteries that recharge in, well, well, you have to trust me, I don't, I don't have a charger handy. I'd have to move some stuff to show you the charger. Oh, here we go. Sorry about that. Here's uh, 18650 charger. They just pop in here, and those are great batteries. The 18650s are wonderful. They hold a lot of power, so they would run. This uh, MP3 player would run for days off of those two batteries. So how that will work is this unit here is going to go in here. The I have a Velcro to keep the remote up here, and then there's going to be. Two input jacks, one on each side, they're going to be stereo input jacks, quarter inch or 6.5 millimeter stereo jacks. So my wife has a bass guitar processor that has an amp and cabinet simulator that has that stereo headphone jack style output. So her, her signal will come in stereo to here. My signal, same thing. Uh, it's a Zoom G3 or a G10N, I've got both. And those have amp and cab sim, so it's one cable but stereo that comes in. And then you'll have a, these are stereo channels, these, uh, there's a master and then four. And we'll, we'll be only be using three, so it'll be, the MP3 will be here. And the MP3, basically I use music software and throw drum loops in there and make a loop, a song of the drums. And then we play along with that. So there'll be another jack with a foot switch cable that comes out of here that connects to the play and pause button of the mp3 circuit and we put like a four count in the beginning we'll put a couple seconds and a four count and then we put time at the end we put like about 20 to 30 seconds of silence on the end so when we finish a song we can adjust we can change patches on our multi-effector wipe your brow to get your pick up again and then it'll Sometimes it says the name of the song in a digital voice. It'll say like Thummy Uppy 
or whatever the name of the song is, and then tss, 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 and then we start playing along. So one channel's for the MP3, one channel's for the bass guitar that my wife plays, and the other channel's for the electric guitar. And then uh, the speakers that we're going to use, we have a it's a uh, GK is Galen Kruger Neo 210. So there's two tens. It's a super lightweight cabinet. It's big. It's about the size of a 115 combo, uh, 15 inch speaker combo cabinet. But there's two tens in there, and it sounds killer. It's got a horn too for the high end, but with an adjuster on there. You can buy amp it and stuff. It's it's a wonderful cabinet. Uh, so we got that 210. We paid 19.95 for that at uh, Goodwill, which was mind blowing. And then, most recently, I got a pair of Canton speakers. They were $1,500 speakers when they came out in 1986. And the guy had them. It's a German name. The guy uh, engraved his name in the back of them. We got them a couple of months ago from uh, Goodwill. They were. $35 a piece, so it cost us 70 bucks for this pair of speakers, but they're $1,500 speakers. And when I tried them, I could not believe the incredible definition on these speakers. So we're using them. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use them for live, for what we do, because right now we use this similar type of uh, mixer. It's an old, this is a junky model mixer that runs off of 9 volts. And we're doing that into an M audio powered monitor in our home here. We play, um, my wife and I make music as a duo. And so that's the system we use. It's got a master volume. We can just turn down the whole band and then adjust in individually on the little mixer. And so that way we can turn it really quiet. Um, it sounds like a mastered album, is what it sounds like. It's like high quality sound. And I will add like a little bit of ambient reverb when I do the drum tracks um, and basically it comes out of the mixture and goes through a tube preamp to warm it up and then it goes into this powered monitor M audio which is a really good sounding monitor with it looks like a four and a half inch speaker in there so we're able to play that it gets loud but we don't really turn it up that loud because of the bass we don't want to bother the neighbors so that idea took me into thinking, well, why don't we do this with the whole band? And that way we would just bring two these, they're like big bookshelf speakers, these Cantons. They've got eight inch drivers. They're three ways and they just sound incredible. They sound so good. So what I did, I set up uh, a stereo, a two by 25 of 50 watt. And I put one channel going to the GK Neo 210 for the bass, and the other channel I had going to one of those Kenton audio speakers, the $1,500 speaker. Well, it would be $750 for one. And we set that up and ran that mono, uh, some mono, and then into the uh, amp, you know, the 25 watt amp by two. And we tried it out, and using this setup, with nothing else and just going right into those two speakers sounded so unbelievably good with no separate adjustments it was just mono going right into both this will have a treble adjustment and a bass frequency and a bass volume so you'll really be able to adjust even more fine-tune it between just the level of the bass off of this throw here you'll be able to get get it to sound like unbelievably good so that's a matter of like adjusting. She's going to have a dedicated multi effector, a Zoom B10N, and we can really fine tune that with the levels to keep everything uh, when she changes patches. She used three different patches. One is a straight compressed bass, one is a fuzz bass distortion, a lot of distortion on it, but it's still got a lot of low end. You could hear the bass. And then the other one is a uh, auto wah, funky bass sound. So we'll just dial that in, and uh, even if I, you know, have to, I'll, I can, I'll have this by my side, and I'll be able to adjust it here to bass frequency and volume. So let's see what they gave us in the ba little baggie. It looks like we got four knobs. 
three yellow and one red. And then there's one, two, three, four, four standoffs with um, four screws. The only thing that we didn't get that I'm a little disappointed is wiring harness because there's this three pin three pin connector here. It would have been nice to get that. Um, yeah, this, this is a four pin. So it's no big deal. I'll, I'll either um, I need to order those is what I need to do. But yeah, this is this is going to go inside of here. Um, I got to drill like here. And so this will sit inside of this thing on the standoffs like this. And then this goes, it'll be facing this way. So boop, 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 like that. This is the master. Probably won't use this one. So it'll be uh, MP3 bass and guitar. So it'll be like this. And I'll, I'll probably have it set set up so they'll, it'll run about like that. You know, that would probably be about ideal. And as far as these inputs go, on the bottom of the board, I have access to just solder right in on the board. So we won't be, I won't be using any of the RCA connections that are down in here. That is the RCAs. I'll just solder right in on there and have those go to their appropriate places. And they are stereo channels. So this, I know you're curious, the big question is what the heck is this piece here, this mixer that runs off of 6 volts, uh, stereo video sound mixer, power phones, mic jacks, and then you have RCA output for the master, and then music 1, music 2, and audio input right and left. So. Those are, this is, this comes out of a, uh, it's a device, which is a very weird thing. It's a box with a mirror and a light in it. You hook up a modern day video recorder and then an old slide projector or a Super 8 movie screen. So you, you set up your Super 8 movie projector to shine on this plate of glass. And then there's a mirror that sits at a 45 degree angle and you set up a recorder to go inside of this box where it's all black in there it's sealed off from light. So then you could queue up your old movie and then hit record and convert your old Super 8 movies or slides uh, to a modern day video format. So the video was there in case you played tapes for your, or you had a, let's say you had a sound Super 8 camera. You would take a jack out of that or use a microphone and then use this mixer. And they give you extra channels on it if you want to get fancy and add background. Uh, let's say you you have two mics, uh, music one, music two, and audio. So if you wanted to have uh, sound effects and whatever else you wanted to mix in on your final production, that would all go to this master jacks and you could plug those uh, cable out going into your camera. So then on your video, you could talk over it, voice over it, have sound effects and background music coming together. So it's a pretty cool professional thing. Most of those ca uh, capture boxes that you see, and you see them now, people bought them because it was a, like a Christmas gift because they would complain. Oh, well, we took all these movies of the kids when the kids were coming up and growing up our vacations every time we went to Disney, and then the bulb burnt out in the projector, and we can't find the bulb for the projector anywhere, and all of those movies are just sitting there, and we'll never be able to watch them again. So then finally, the tech-savvy, you know, uh, grandkid would... the. the Mom and Dad would go, hey, we're going to get this thing for Grandma, so go on the computer, figure out what model they have, their projector, and get a bulb, and then we'll buy them this box, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do that for them. And then usually what happens is 
they bought it, they opened it up, and it's like, oh my goodness, this thing's complicated, and they put it back in the box and never used it. Now those old grandpa and grandpas have died, that thing has sat in somebody's storage for a while, and they're starting to show up. People are getting rid of them at Goodwill, and most of the time when you see these things, they'll be the cheap model that does not have the audio mixer portion, because they had the regular one that was just a box, and then they had the deluxe. So you got to get lucky and find the deluxe one, and then this comes out of here, and I know you're thinking, oh, it's a low voltage mixer, it's not any good. Well, for live, uh, all of the footage that is with the family band playing, you're here in that mixer. All of the drums and the bass guitar went through it, because we were using a single amp to do that job for the longest time, and it doesn't, it didn't cut any of the fidelity. It sounds fine. For what we're doing, uh, and it, if this doesn't work, like I haven't, I haven't tested this one yet, but I've got another exact same one that's running in the other amp, and this was brand new when I got it, so I know it'll work. But if there if there is a problem with this, I will uh, I will just as soon get something else. I will just as soon box this up in a different. I have another box for it that's sitting right over there, and I can put this in a different box uh, and run a battery-powered mixer that sits on top of it. Something like the PD, the uh, PM600 or PV600 is, uh, takes three 9-volt batteries, or you could run it off of DC power just by coming coming in a mod jack or what, however I would figure it out. And then there's the Behringer uh, B1002, whatever that 1008. Same thing, three 9 volt batteries, and they're they're fifty dollars used. You can get them for a hundred new, but uh, for me to, I couldn't pass this up when I saw this this for six bucks, and then the box cost me three. So um, I know it looks like it's going to be janky, and it's not going to sound good. But trust me, it's going to be good enough for what we do. It's going to sound killer. It will. It's just going through another gain stage, and that with the way that that's d designed, it's not, it doesn't hiss. If you turn it all the way up, it will hiss. But if you keep it down between halfway and three quarter, it just sounds awesome. It doesn't sound like anything. You can't tell that there's a problem with it. Same thing with the Tascam mini mixer, the 9 volt mini mixer. I know people say, you need 15 by 15. Uh, uh, dual voltage, you know, what do they call it, uh, bipolar power supply to do a mixer. Well, yeah, maybe you do if you're doing pro music production with a bunch of channels, but for a live application where we're only mixing three channels, this is fine. So, anyway, the amp, uh, when I get this finished, I will do a video, another video on this showing it off after we've taken it out and used it. There's a single switch here that I didn't mention, I should mention. There was a guy who, in the comments, who had bought this, and he was like, what does that switch do? I can't figure it out for the life of me. Well, it sits right next to the treble. It sits right next to the uh, treble control. And it's actually labeled very clearly, all frequencies are normal, okay? So I'm guessing it's a shelf where when you have it in the normal position, which is up, uh, it's a shelf. It only, when you turn that knob down, it only affects uh, the high-end frequencies of the tone. And then when you hit it down, so it's a capacitance switch, it'll eliminate this capacitor. And then when you hit it down, it opens it up so it tapers tone over the whole spectrum of sound. So yeah, that switch, I will test what it does, and if it is something I'm going to want to be toggling, I will leave it in the off position. I will solder in the wires here 
on the board and run them up to the front panel and have a switch to replicate that. So that as long as I have that in the open position and run it up, when I throw that switch, it'll just be like throwing it on the board. So I can replicate that switch on the front panel. But yeah, there's it's SMT, surface mount technology. It's the, the small stuff on here. I apologize for not having a better image of this. But it's, uh, there's four, one, there's op, one op amp, one by the volume, and then by the tone controls, there's three of those. Um, if they're so tiny. R4580. TLO 72, TLO 72. Yeah, so there's two TLO 72s, a, a 4580, which is like, uh, that's what was in the Tube Screamers. The TLO 72 was a dual op amp that's a more modern, more efficient, uh, real nice sounding op amp. And then this big, the power main power filter and capacitor is a 6800 microfarad 35 volt. Uh, it's a it's branded a Nishion, but it's not. It's a it's a knockoff, right? I mean, it's I don't know if you can see that in there. That doesn't look legit to me, but what else do we got here? So here's a, what do you call that, frequency, a crystal for the clock, because like I said, this, uh, it's a sine wave, the carrier wave, for, that's how these digital amp works. So overall, the, I paid um, $24 for this, and the amount of research time that I put on this one was, well, you know what, it wasn't, it wasn't 24 I think it was, I think it was 19 I, I might be confused, we'll, we'll, we'll just be safe by saying it was the 24 bucks because I know you can easily find that one for $24. Now, this is a newer design board, but the, uh, they've got plenty of them that do the same thing, that look similar. Uh, the reason I went with this one is because of the reviews. I wasn't sure because it looked like the... Oh, look at that. The heat sink is bent. It looked like the heat sink wasn't that big. But... Um, it turns out it's it's decent it's a decent amount and I know I know how little heat that these actually generate when you run them they don't generate much heat and you know what I'm not sure if I'm even going to worry about bending this back too much how hard did they power slam this. Unreal. You know, it's always something. And I know, oh, sorry about that. I know there, there's a certain type of person who would send this back. You know? It's bent. Not here. So, do I remove the heat sink and take a look at what what's inside see Petey goes the extra mile I just got these the set of screwdrivers it's a affordable set of precision but I like having a, a unbelievably oversized way too long Phillips for these type of screws that you see. Now, how much am I going to regret? Ooh, I'm going to regret it. 
there's washers, spacing washers here. And it turns out that they that was completely unnecessary. Okay, the alarm siren just went off. Of CNN. Yeah, the shutdown isn't ending anytime soon. That's not good. So we we've got. They actually did use. I hope we're not under attack. It's 1:11 p.m. here in Chicago, and they just blew the sirens. So yeah, uh, they did. They did use the um, heat sink compound under here. Sometimes they don't. I just wanted to make sure. Now I'm going to have to reapply that. And this video has been actually way too long as it is. So that's the idea behind this one. It's going to end up being our amp for the duo when we play outdoors this summer. So I will. When this is finished, I will definitely check in and show you guys what that looks like. And you'll be able to hear what it sounds like because all of the music that we play this summer will be made with this amplifier mixer combo. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to go listen to the radio and make sure we're not under attack. <laughs> Peace.